let us try to solve the exercise number 8 in the part B of uh, BSc Web Technology Lab. In this particular exercise, we are supposed to write a servlet program to find the new user and the repeated user of the website using cookies. So this is what um, is the question. And for this particular exercise, I'm going to use a old ID and that is the NetBeans 8.1. So the ID that I'm going to use is the NetBeans 8.1. You can use 8.2 also. 8.2 is also available. You can always use it. So suppose if it is not there on your machine, what you are going to do? Definitely you will go to the uh, Google and oh, okay. and uh, you are going to just uh, a second. I'm going to just to disconnect my internet. This is what I don't want to happen. Okay, so anyhow, I've uh, already kept everything ready here. So if you go to the internet and then search for NetBeans uh, download, what you are going to see is uh, you will go to the Apache NetBeans website. I've already done that thing. And the latest version of uh, NetBeans is uh, NetBeans 21. This is the latest version. However, you have an option for downloading the older releases. If you click on this one, you will see the older releases. And if you scroll down, the last release is 9, not 8. 8 versions are not available in the Apache website they, because they have told you uh, pre-Apache NetBeans is not available there. Now, if you click on this uh, NetBeans 9 and try to download it, you will go to the download site here, that means nine, and it, it's already saying it is incubating, okay? And here, you will notice that uh, the one that you are going to download is actually not in, uh, it is not a setup file. It's the exe file that you're going to download. That means you will get uh, netbeans.exe. So it is a executable file you are going to get it with other folders, uh, which are zipped together, you can use it, okay? So you must understand that. Now the question is, uh, from where will I get it? Now, if you search hard, you may get uh, NetBeans 8.2 from uh, the Informa Technologies or any other uh, thing for that matter. Now, one precaution that you must uh, always use when you try to download something from the website, which is not the original website, always after downloading it, just right click on, uh, do not double click and execute it right at the beginning, just right click and go to its properties. It is better you do it when you try to download it from the website that you don't trust. Okay. Again, I'm not blaming, uh, sorry about this one. I'm not blaming that uh, uh, this is a bad web, a website or something of that type, but this is not the original one who is uh, distributing it. So when you are, it is a, you know, prevention is better than cure. So just right click and then see whether it is digitally signed by the Oracle Corporation. Okay, that if it is signed by the oracle that means to say that uh, you can trust to a certain extent definitely you have to use the hash generate uh, sha1 and uh, find out whether uh, the the bits are all proper or not that you can do it but at least uh, this part you do it a few other things that uh, you must understand with the netbeans 8.1 is netbeans 8.1 requires you to have a jdk 8 JDK 8 or uh, whatever it is, the uh, version of 8. Now, if you go to the internet again and go to the Google or any other favorite uh, search engine and then search for JDK, you will go to definitely go to the Oracle. And in the Oracle, you will notice that the latest version of uh, JDK is JDK 21, Java 21. And there, there, there are the two versions. And I'm not going to explain you why these two versions are available, but the latest is uh, 21 not the 8. So don't try to download it. See to it that you download the appropriate version of JDK. If you try to install JDK 21 and then install NetBeans, it will not even start. Forget about doing anything. NetBeans will not start on that version because it is too higher version, the too latest version for the very old software. You know very well. Suppose if you try to install something on your old Windows 7 machine, 
uh, the, uh, your uh, setup will say that it is not possible because you have a very old version. So that's the same problem. Now, when you are, uh, uh, suppose if you double click on uh, this installation 8.1 NetBeans, and when you come to uh, this uh, installation, the, because I've already installed it, uh, it will say that there is nothing much to be installed over here. By default, NetBeans will use a GlassFish server. So there is a uh, application server called as GlassFish. So this uh, GlassFish server, again, it's an open source server, which is a favorite of uh, NetBeans. However, NetBeans will also give you an option to install the Apache Tomcat for BCA students. In your syllabus, there is something about Apache Tomcat. Okay, uh, it will install Catalina on this one. Now, no, in the practicals, they have never mentioned that you have to deploy it on uh, Apache Tomcat. You can uh, deploy it on any server of uh, your choice. However, when you install the NetBeans, this option is not by default selected. You select this option if you're a VCA student and then go to the next step. When in the next step, a uh, very important one, it is going to show you two places. One is the place where it's going to install NetBeans, wherever it is, well and good. The second one is it's going to tell you where is the, which JDK it has recognized. Okay. Now, very important one. Suppose in my machine, I can't show you actually, I also have the version 21 on my machine. So it is going to show you on the next, when you click on the next, it is going to show you that the version that it has selected is the version 21. It is always going to select the latest version. There is a drop down box here. Okay. Click on that drop down box and select the version 8.1, provided you have installed this uh, uh, 8 version. You okay. install this JDK 8. Drop down and select that thing. Remember, you have to do that thing. Otherwise, um, your NetBeans will not start. You need to have the older version of uh, JDK because this ID itself is a very old version. Then you may say that, why, sir, you have selected very old version. Uh, this is to compliance with the BCA student. In BCA student, you are going to use a package and that word is already there, Java X dot something with our x dot servlet dot or generic servlet or anything java x it is there that java x is not there now that package is not there the latest version is it's going to say jakarta i'm not sure jakarta okay jakarta followed by that package itself is not there the if you if you ask why sir it is been uh, done there uh, the story is again i'm not going to uh, because it is a practical demonstration the story is once upon a time sun microsystem started java sun microsystem gave it to oracle okay actually it didn't give actually oracle occupied that sun microsystem altogether and oracle took this java and kept it with them that is a java there are two parts of java one is the ordinary java and the other one is the enterprise java and what you are learning is the enterprise java that is usually called java e java enterprise edition so Java EE, you generally call it as. J JDK is the core Java. Okay. Oracle kept that JDK and changed its licensing and so on and so forth. It changed the whole licensing. But uh, Oracle was kind enough to give this whole JE to Eclipse Foundation. It gave the whole thing to the Eclipse Foundation and said that I'm not going to control it. You control it. So this, uh, the Eclipse Foundation made some changes and they said that the the version that eclipse foundation is now using they are using jakarta okay classes have not changed nothing has changed but the packages have changed but definitely I, mean, I, I don't take that word nothing i'm going to remove that word nothing many things have changed but the fundamentals what you are studying now is still there whether it is jakarta or something else the fundamentals remain same so don't worry about it I'm going to close this one because it's not going to make any difference um, to me. I uh, will just say because I can't proceed with the installation. Now, I assume that you have installed it. You successfully installed it. And uh, if you have observed my Java, ordinary Java classes, I'm already using this uh, 8.1 or the other version. So how do you start it? To start it, you go to the file 
and then go to the new project okay now uh, by the way uh, if i will just uh, interrupt for a while now what if you install this uh, uh, latest and the greatest version of it you will end up in trouble okay so that is the problem uh, you will end up in trouble you install it and then see for yourself and enjoy it okay now because uh, let's uh, assume that uh, you clicked on let me start from here you clicked on uh, the file and uh, click on uh, new project and this time you have an option for selecting you know you can select java for a java ordinary java okay, java fx is something that you don't worry about it there are two options available java e okay so suppose if you want to get a highly paid job in java this is the place where you have to concentrate okay this one uh, the, even though ejb and story has uh, is been taken up by something else but the enterprise edition is here Okay, but we are not going to go for the enterprise edition. We are going to go for the Java web, this one. Okay, so I'm going to click on Java web and I'm going to click on the web application. Now, if you're using the very latest version, it is going to show you uh, Java Maven and the other one is, uh, I forgot it. Uh, and the Java Ant, you will get the Ant script. Use the Ant script for uh, building the project. Okay, so that will be easy. So let's start with the Java web and uh, web application. I'm going to go to the next one. And as usual, it's going to uh, give you what is the name of uh, your application. And uh, I'm going to say exercise uh, number B8. You can give any name of your choice. Okay. And I'm going to go to the next one. When you click on the next one, remember you have an option for uh, selecting the server i'm going to use the glassfish server okay you can select a tomcat server also it is not going to make any difference in your project but i prefer uh, the glassfish uh, the reason is i will show you uh, the reason because i want to explain something to you it's not going to make any difference in your coding okay, so don't worry about it okay and uh, you have the version 7 let it be whichever version is okay with you Let's go next and uh, it's going to ask you for uh, some framework but remember one of the uh, framework that if you want to get a good job a, a lot of money is the spring this is framework you must learn okay, if you're told you want to do something in Java this framework is something that uh, you concentrate spring is still there hibernate is the next one that you can think of uh, using it definitely starts uh, you are, if you have uh, visited the KSRTC reservation, uh, it is based on struts. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, with the finish part and uh, let's finish it up. Now, what you are going to see if you uh, create uh, this particular application, as usual, you will see the project. So if you have done it uh, in the older Java. Uh, you will see the projects so a lot of projects I have created this is my exercise number eight so there are few things you must understand with this project it is not with respect to NetBeans alone it is with respect to the uh, package that it is going to create you must have the same structure now this web pages are meant to create HTML pages or JSP pages all your JSP pages will come under web pages Okay. your servlet will come here so very very extremely careful never put the servlet in this place it's not going to work it's not going to even uh, build the, your entire package together okay will not create that bundle so all your servlet will come in this place your web pages html or images what you know the html story uh, the css all is here do not bring them in this place you will confuse uh, the builder script and uh, it will not build uh, the whole thing okay now how do i add the servlet remember i will not add the servlet here even though i get an option to add a servlet this is not the folder where you are going to add the servlet this is the place where you are going to add the java remember that particular thing if you make that mistake your whole thing will not get compiled okay so right click here 
and you get an option for servlet okay if you don't get the servlet as usual go to the others suppose if you don't get it go to the others and in the others you get a lot of options here jsf and here under this web you get the option for servlet both are same whether you go take a long turn and reach here or take a short turn and go here and then select the servlet this is the easiest one just click on servlet your servlet is ready okay give it a name okay and uh, i am uh, going to say visitor visitor check okay a few things that uh, i have observed uh, when the students are uh, creating their application is uh, always remember by convention class name is in capital first letter is capital you must understand that particular thing okay uh, some people write it in this lower case you will confuse the java altogether okay by convention class name starts with capital letter whether you like it or not that is not the thing it is a convention okay next very important thing is you have to specify a package here very very important very critical thing remember if you put it in the default package even though it's, it has one default package it will not get compiled so never forget to write a package name you can write any package but i'm going to say this is my component so i'm going to say com i'm creating a component so com is my package can i write money as my package allowed can i write udupi as my package allowed can i write karnataka as my package anything is allowed okay don't put uh, spaces and type but a single word is uh, allowed there let me go to the next one okay and it's going to say do you want to add it uh, to the deployment descriptor now for you that story yeah, i don't think so that story is there in your syllabus but for a BCA student, deployment descriptor is there. Nobody is going to ask you during the examination, show the deployment descriptor, but just for uh, to please the BCA student, I'm going to say add this information to deployment descriptor. Okay, simply, okay. For no reason, you just add that particular thing. And you notice one thing is the URL that it is going to use is slash visitor.check. So that will be the URL. I'm going to just show you that particular thing. And I'm going to just finish it off. Okay. You created the servlet. Your servlet is there. Suppose without doing anything, without creating the servlet, without doing anything, if you want to run this particular application, to run this particular application, you need to start the. Remember, I selected uh, the Glassfish as my server. So here on this side, you see the services you see the services i have uh, removed this one okay if you lock it you're going to see it like this but uh, i have made it small so that you can uh, see the whole thing here services okay you see the services here okay suppose uh, it is not here it is there or somewhere else what you're going to do you just reset the id if you don't see anything here you have an option go to windows and you have uh, somewhere you get reset windows okay. it will not uh, reset your microsoft windows it will reset all the windows which are there inside this id so just reset the thing and you are going to get it okay so let's go to the services now under the services you have the server services under the ser services of the sorry the not services the servers okay. uh, under services you have servers you have the tomcat which I installed it. If you have not selected that right mark, it won't show you. You have Glassfish because um, my favorite is Glassfish. So, uh, and that's why I deployed it. If it is, a, if you selected Tomcat, then Tomcat. Uh, in my case, it is Glassfish. I'm going to go to the Glassfish and right click on it and then say start. If it was uh, your favorite was um, Tomcat, right click and start. It's up to you. Uh, remember but if during the when you created this project if you have selected glassfish as your server then don't start uh, apache uh, this uh, tomcat because it will not deploy it there it will deploy it on the glassfish itself so let me right click on it and then let me say start okay. it will start the 
application server so somewhere you down you will notice that a glass fish it's going to show you glass fish if you click on this glass fish it's going to show you glass fish and uh, it's going to say launching glass fish uh, platform and so on it's going to start the glass fish and in the services you notice uh, it's showing you how glass here and it will show you a play button once uh, everything is uh, once it has started the server it's going to show you uh, it has a play button now it is still if you look at the output it is still doing it my, my machine is a bit uh, slow that is why uh, it will take uh, some time for uh, it to start up and uh, show the server to me okay so uh, once it starts it you will uh, see okay Apache Derby it has started that is not the Derby is not required as such a plus which was required my machine somehow it has become slow for uh, no reason I don't know what was the reason okay so once it has uh, started I think it is taking too much of time to start uh, the glass fish so let's see let's hope for the uh, best in your machine if your machine is a bit uh, fast you are going to see the effect very quickly so once your uh, server has started it, it should start let me refresh it i think it has started i think okay let's see uh, it is let's see okay whether it has started okay last fish you see there um, when it is starting uh, it will show you a lot of things don't worry about it you know a lot of things it, this is called as a log file it will show you all unvisited visitors and so on no worry it is not required okay it is its work yeah, finally it will show you that particular thing my machine is slow i don't uh, worry about that my machine itself is slow okay now once it started you see that uh, play like button that means it is running this uh, glass fish is running okay now keep that thing there okay now this is uh, i came here to the services just start the glass fish that's it start the glass fish it's like uh, if you have done this php and other thing you start uh, the server you just start the server and keep it now back to your project okay so exercise 8 was my project i'm going to run this uh, project full from here if you run it the whole project will run okay from uh, here you also you can run it i will show the both of them so i'm going to run this thing i'm going to say run you can say build deploy and other thing or just uh, in plain uh, english you just say run it it's going to run it my machine is slow uh, kindly excuse me for that i'm not wasting your internet time but i can't help it okay it is good machine but uh, something has happened uh, with that uh, when my machine is a bit slow and you notice uh, it is taking too much of time to build and so on and it says uh, it is starting browser and you're going to see this uh, good thing to do write the content here and uh, the local host whatever it is exercise uh, a to b this was the name that um, you have created uh, where from where did you get this to do right okay this is actually a web page which is there so if you look at uh, your project now okay you see this index.html so it is showing this index.html i'm going to just double click and show you in this index.html you see this to do write the content okay by the way i have changed the font to i think uh, i changed it to times new roman or something i changed the font of uh, this id so that uh, it looks uh, larger in your uh, case uh, the font size is smaller because when i record it with this font size is small you may not be able to see what i'm typing okay so your project is running uh, this is not uh, this is not real record i suppose not okay so let's go to this uh, thing and uh, let's say to this okay now you have created the servlet forget about it this is how you write or run the project okay so you right click here and run the whole project so however in this case you don't need to run this whole project because uh, you have to run this servlet how do you run this servlet so let's look at this servlet first 
So if you, the visitor check was my sublet. So I'm going to just click here and uh, for your kind information, this is the sublet. You notice that uh, this part is for, uh, let me click here and uh, let me show you this part. Okay. This part is for adding HTML page, CSS file, JSP file, uh, images and so on and so forth. This part is for adding Java and in particular the servlet, the other thing, other Java classes that if you are creating, all these are here. Okay, so don't get confused. Your Java part will come here, HTML part will come here. This, if it comes here, it will not compile. Again, if, if this goes to the other side, it will not get compiled. So very, very careful with that uh, particular thing. So now let's look at this. Um, visitor check dot java what is there in this one okay uh, definitely this is a java file so it starts with the package and you know very well the package was com and the package is com and a lot of um, uh, things are there and you know very well the one that you are going to run is uh, a servlet and it is uh, the announcement of java so java x servlet okay and in particular you are going to use the HTTP servlet, which is a uh, uh, child of uh, the servlet interface, which was there. So in theory, you are going to learn a lot of things over here. So if you notice over here, your class that you have created, that is visitor check, extends from HTTP servlet. So this HTTP servlet, where is this HTTP servlet? It is there and the Java X dot servlet dot HTTP dot HTTP servlet. It's there hidden. Okay. Now, what is this uh, HTTP servlet? You are extending. So, what is the meaning of saying you are extending? Is already this class is there. Okay. You are extending this. You are adding additional functionality to this uh, HTTP servlet. Now, what is this uh, HTTP servlet? If you right click and then uh, say uh, show package on the other things if you navigate go to the source of this one it will take you to the source of HTTP servlet okay now this HTTP servlet the one that uh, you are doing it is already extending from one other servlet so there is already something called as generic servlet the HTTP servlet is extending this generic servlet and what you are doing you are again extending uh, let me go here where is the color i can see the color you are again extending the uh, from generic it went to the http servlet you are now extending this uh, thing and you are building something out of it. so you are actually using one more now what is a generic servlet again if you navigate it's going to be a terrible thing so if you navigate this generic servlet is actually implementing a interface called as servlet okay so that is where the whole uh, mystery likes that servlet is not a class it's, it's actually an interface okay if you right click again and say what is this servlet now sir it will go again say servlet has uh, the few methods what are the few methods you are going to learn this story in your theory class there is a init method there is a service method and so on and so forth so a lot of uh, things are there you will learn about this in the servlet life cycle so always remember that this is a full extension of a lot of things okay now the question is uh, to write the practical exam do I have to know all these uh, mysteries? The answer is absolutely not required. You just uh, create your class, extend it out of uh, HTTP servlet. Now, HTTP servlet has two methods. One is do get method. There are other methods out there. One is uh, generally we are going to use the get method. Other one is the post method. Two methods we generally use it. Now, two methods are different one get method is different and um, the post method is different see get means i want to get something from the website that is it post means you know i am posting a letter that means i am sending something back so this part is for sending something back 
this one needs to get something from the site. Now what NetBeans has done is it has still reduced your work. Okay. So you even don't have to, it just says that if you want to develop the application, don't worry about to get the poster and other things. I am going to give you one more method. So this is not there in the life cycle. That is called as process request. What is this process request? This is a method that NetBeans has added. So this is a, a function, you know, method or function, whatever you call it as. So both of them, whether you go to the get method, that is do get method or do post method, both of them will call this method. Whether you come here, you post it or get it, both of them will come to this. So this is the common place where you are going to write your whole story. So your whole thing, get to post whatever you write this, to write it here. Rest of them, you don't bother. So you are a, a lot of mysteries which are there in the JE, all are solved. So you just write your code here, rest is automatically taken care. Okay. Now, two things you must understand. So when your application is running on the glass fish, you, this, you see this glass fish here. Okay, let me get my this one, glass fish. Whenever you send something, okay, this is called as a request. Okay, you ask the server, what is your name? So you are requesting server. Server, please tell me what is your name, request. Okay. And what a server will do? Server will respond. My name is Glassfish. Okay. So two things are there. By default, you don't have to bother about it. One is the request. The other one is the response. And you will see them here. Because we are using the web-based and you know very web we are using HTTP. HTTP is, you know, the protocol, hypertext transfer protocol. So there are two requests, two, two parameters are there, request and response. Okay. If you want to make a request from this server, use this, okay, this object. If you want a resp if you want to see the response from the server, use this. So if you want to know what was uh, the server was saying to you, use the response. If you want to ask the server something, some question, use the request object. Remember, from where did you get those requests and response? If you see that, request and response is part of this do get and do post method. Okay. It is already there. It is just being forwarded. So you notice there, here you get this request. That same request is passed to the process request. You get the response. The same thing is passed here. For this method it is just passing it back over here so you get this request method and response method now let's go ahead and let's uh, right click on it see uh, very simple you what you did uh, even though i have talked for five minutes what you did was you just created a class okay you right click down here you created a, a servlet okay if you run from here the whole application will run but i don't want that whole application to run I want this servlet, that is my servlet one, I want my servlet to run. So how do I run my servlet? This is my servlet, remember, this is my servlet, you see that, where is the servlet, okay, you see this, visitor check extends HTTP servlet, so this is my servlet, so I'm going to go to this servlet, right click on it, and then say run. I am running the servlet, remember, I am not running this, there is a huge difference between two things if you run it from here whole project will run if you run it from here this particular servlet will run okay so i want this servlet to run so right click anywhere in the blank area a lot of blank area is the right click and then you get an option for run in any case you're going to get the option for run okay run this thing now I told you, it's going to say the URL location. <clears throat> what was the URL location? If you want, you can add the parameters here, but I don't want to add any parameters like flower equal to rose, color equal to red or something. 
I don't want to add anything. I just want to run this one and see for myself what it is going to show you. So just run it. When you run it, you are going to see servlet visitor check at exercise uh, something. So where did you get to this part? In this method, let's look at this process request method. Remember, uh, for get or post, this method is called. So there is only one method. In this method, remember two things are there. Okay, one is a request. The other one is a response. Okay, now you get one other parameter that is out. So this, uh, what is this uh, out? Out is a response dot get right. This part is called as a out. This is the out. Out is nothing but remember I told you two things. What is two things? To send something. If you want to make a request, ask a question to the server, then that is a request. Response is what the server is giving you. So what is the response that server gave you is this one. Servlet visitor check 8. This is the response that the server has given. So that means this is the response. You, are, If you were asking a question, then it is the request. So remember two things. Request and response stories are same. Okay. So you have this uh, out. And what you notice over here in this out, actually out is creating an HTML. Hope uh, you are familiar with this uh, story of HTML. You have HTML, you have head tag, you have body tag. In this body tag, it is saying servlet visitor at the request dot get path. See, request means you are requesting. So you are asking, tell me which, which path. Where is the, this servlet? You are asking that question. And that is why the servlet says, look at here, servlet visitor check. So this part, servlet visitor check. Where is it? It is at, this is the question you have asked, request at, so servlet request at, get, give me, you are asking this question. Request means you are asking. Get the context. Context means where is it? So you are asking it and it says it is inside this application ex8.b. This is the application you just created. So it is there inside this. So that is what it is showing. Okay, done. Well and good. So now coming after a lot of struggle, we are coming to after 15 minutes, we are coming to the actual question. We are supposed to create a cookie. Okay. Now what is this cookie? Again, if you are not very familiar with the story of the cookie, is cookie is a small piece of text that the server is giving you okay you know now server has responded it has responded with the visitor check and something this is the response you got you can get a small textual information which you can ask the browser to save it and that is what is the cookie now in java you know very well whether it is a cookies whether it is a cake whether it is a chocolate in Java, you don't have, you have only three things. What is the three things? One is the package. Second one is the class. Third one is the interface. One among them has to be there. Okay. So what is this cookie? See if you ask. So what is this cookie? Cookie is a class. That is simple as that. So cookie is a class. And where do you find a class? Class will be there inside one package. So you must know which is the package. As simple as that. Okay. So how can I create a cookie? Okay, the question will come. How do I create a cookie? Definitely, you have a class. You instantiate that class. So simple as that. So if you want to create a cookie, there is a class, fortunately, called as cookie. Okay. So where is this cookie class? If I'm going to press Control and Space on my keyboard, Control and Space. If you press Control and Space. The NetBeans will say, are you talking about a cookie which is there inside this? Java X servlet HTTP cookie. It is because we are writing HTTP application. This is the, that cookie word is there in this Java.net. 
Java dot cookie dot char and many places it is there, but uh, we are talking about Java X dot servlet. So it is this. So I'm going to just double click on this, or you can just click on it. So it has added an import statement saying that Java X dot servlet dot HTTP cookie. They just added that thing. So this is the import statement that is required. So how do you create a class? You know, how did you create it? this? Uh, I'm going to just say. A employee class was there. Employee, employee, what is this? Employee ex is equal to new employee. Are you familiar with this story? Okay. So you created employee object. Are you familiar with that story? Same story is repeating here now. You have cookie. I can give any name to this cookie. Can I say CK? CK. Okay, I can say C also equal to new cookie. Okay. It's simple as that. Yes. Now there is two things that you must give. One is the name. So this is a. I think you have studied this Python story. You have the, this part. Where is this going? Let me. How you do it? Okay. See. Yeah. What is this? And, Again, uh, okay, so uh, this part is the key. You know this uh, story. I uh, hope you are familiar. This is key, and definitely this is value. Key value pair. Have you heard about that story? One is the key, other one is the value. So here also same so Key is that is used to identify. For example, register number is the key. Reg number, or just a reg number is the key what is the value value is ugd7654321 whatever it is you are using ucms numbers okay. something of that type so this part is the key where is the okay this part is the key and this part is the value as simple as that okay so i am going to create a cookie to identify the user so what is the key is I will use uh, my name also, but uh, I will not uh, advertise my name. So I'm going to say user. What is the value? You are visiting it for the first time. So I'm going to say one. As simple as that. You have created this cookie. As simple as that, is it not? You have to send this cookie to the client. If you just create it here, nothing is going to happen. So that means you have to send from the server, you have to send back. Server has to respond. So how do you say that respond story? Okay. So the respond story, you know, there are two things. One is the request. You see this request is to make the request from the server. Now server is responding back. So you can't get it in the request. You have to say response. Okay. You can use control space response dot add the cookie when you are sending you remember the server is sending this html page okay in between i am saying in this html page you just add one cookie okay add this cookie and what is the name of the cookie netbeans is intelligent enough and say that okay this ck was the cookie object that you created you are going to run that particular thing Okay. I'm going to run this uh, thing just for your information. I'm going to just run it. Don't worry, you will see it many times. Just run it. Nothing visibly, nothing is going to happen. Okay, it is still the same. But I'm going to use uh, Firefox. Uh, I'm doing Firefox because uh, in, in uh, Internet Explorer also, um, uh, this uh, Chrome also, that story is there. But I'm going to use uh, Firefox. For some reason, I'm going to show you what is not happening in the Internet Explorer or something else. Now, you have this three ellipses here. I'm going to just click on this three ellipses. Okay. And I'm going to go to this uh, more tools. I think uh, in the web, uh, I have told you what is this more tools. And I'm going to say in this more tools, I just clicked on the more tools. And I'm going to say web developer tools. I want this web developer tools. Do we get this whole thing even in the Internet Explorer or Chrome? You will get it. Click on this ellipsis, go to more tools, 
and you get this uh, where is this uh, web tools uh, developer tools the words may be different you get the whole thing like this as it is you get it like this only but uh, uh, I, I found that uh, I can't click on that okay, in this Internet Explorer and uh, Firefox uh, not this Firefox what was that Chrome I'm not getting it but uh, the Mozilla Chrome uh, this uh, uh, Firefox I'm getting it okay I'm going to just uh, refresh it just to show you what is going to happen now before I refresh it okay I'm going to click on this network part I'm interested in what is sent and what is received okay, I'm going to request refresh it that means I am requesting the server to send this uh, servlet again send the response of this servlet again I'm going to just do that thing and when I do that thing you notice um, the request that um, I am doing is this get is the request get me that value of that cookie that is it status is okay now if you just click on this one just click on this one you will notice this is what is missing in that uh, thing internet explorer it is to show i don't know in my case uh, maybe it's the thing it used to show that thing now it is not showing that thing now uh, some of chrome is showing this okay now you notice a few things over here when i say get the visitor check that is a servlet it uh, responded back with this one okay and in the header remember uh, two things are there what are the two things are there you studied about networking last semester you did a lot of uh, research uh, with the ns2 and so on so you know the story of this uh, protocols in protocols you have two things okay any packet for that matter packet or frame or whatever you call it as there is a header section which is actually a small section and there is a payload section which is uh, containing the data now this payload is this html part that is the whole thing whatever you write in this uh, that is your payload header is uh, some information about what is the length what is the encoding and all those stories okay that is what is the header now if you look at this uh, headers here now this header itself contains that cookie the header contains the cookie so what is a very important thing about here is you know generally the header size is very small so you can't put uh, the entire world inside the cookie so remember that cookie is always limited by something so when the server is responding back the header contains a cookie and what is there inside cookie key value pair what is the key i told you it is a user what is the value one and the good thing about uh, this uh, the, uh, the firefox is i can see the cookie here by clicking on cookie i can see what is the thing so responded this and we notice that a request also same so what does what is the meaning what does this thing now suppose if you don't know see when you go to any website chrome uh, the any website for that matter uh, the google or facebook or anything it is going to send you this cookie remember cookie is not the payload so you won't see it here it will come along with the head and it will be stored inside your machine okay when you visit this facebook or netflix or any other place that cookie that you got from their website so facebook uh, uh, if you are going the cookie that came from the facebook will go back to facebook itself it will not go to the your instagram it will not do that so if you have got uh, a cookie from the facebook when you re when you revisit it back when you go back okay the browser will automatically take this cookie and give it back to them so this is simple as that okay so when you visit for the first time so what happens when you visit the website facebook or for that matter uh, any website for that uh, thing so when you visit any website for the first time the web server will give you a cookie not to you to the browser when you revisit if there is any cookie that it has got it will send that cookie back so you notice that when it is responded back when it responded back it actually sent this cookie back so because it received this cookie I refreshed it so remember I refreshed it when I refresh it the cookie was there in my machine it sent it back so it is gone there okay 
now the question is how do i check that uh, whether uh, so remember the server gave you the cookie when you when you refresh it the cookie went back to the server okay so i want to check in the server whether that cookie is there or not how do i check that okay uh, to check that there are few things you must understand remember in my case i was very stingy and i just created one cookie you can create a lot of cookies and send them one after the other you can send them so that is not generally the server will give you one or two or three or five many number of cookies not just one it is free to give you any number of cookies so when you revisit back suppose uh, when you visited this server if you got five cookies from this server okay when you revisit back all the five cookies are will be sent back remember it is sent back to the same website it is automatically taken care by the browser you don't need to bother about it so when it you send it back it, it is going to go and stay there okay, now done let's go to this story now how do i check whether the cookie is there or not okay so remember response means you know what is the story response mean the response you are getting it from the server request i am requesting the server do you have a cookie so request is it there or not okay now because i told you you can uh, the server can give you five cookies and all the five cookies are sent back so we are going to store them somewhere so where will you store it definitely you are going to store it inside the array you know what is an array okay so all of them are cookies so i'm going to say cookie remember all of them are cookies okay and i'm going to create um, a array called car cookie array of cookies you know arr you know you created this arr which is array because i'm storing cookies i will say car cookie is array you see class that to make it uh, look beautiful i'm going to do that and i'm going to say i'll go to the request you know very well request it request and the net means is uh, intelligent enough to say that you have to get cookies so i'm asking the server get me all the cookies that the client has given me give me all the cookies remember i am not interested in all the cookies i want only one cookie which is that one cookie that i created yes sir so if it is there i am going to do something if it is not there i am going to do something else okay remember when you visit it for the first time okay for the first time not for the second time for the first time when you visit it suppose say for the first time you visited facebook first time then no cookies are there because see only when you go to facebook it will give you cookies for the first time nothing is there so when the first request is sent no cookies will be there so when the first request is sent no cookies are there but what the server will do when it is responding back it will send the cookie to you okay hope you get it so for the first time when you visit a, a website you make a request give me this page no cookies are sent because you don't have the cookie probably who is going to give you the cookie the server has to give the cookie first time you are visiting no cookies but uh, the what this uh, server will do when it is responding back it will send you a cookie first time request no cookie okay but server is giving you a cookie second time if you try to visit now cookie is there so it will send the cookie so first time when you visit there is no cookie because server has not given the cookie second time third time fourth time fifth time seventh time whatever it is you already have a cookie with you suppose if the server has given you the cookie you have the server has given you the cookie that means the cookie is already sent so if the person is coming for the first time then this whole thing that you see over here 
will be null because there is no cookie. Did you got it? So when you go for the first time, suppose say you installed Windows fresh and you are going to the facebook.com. You are just visiting the space. Where is the cookie? Only once you visit the Facebook, Facebook will give you a cookie. If you just reach the Facebook, nothing is there. No cookie is there. So this is the first time. Second time, cookie is there. Because once you reach the Facebook, it will give you a cookie to your machine. Next time, third time, fourth time, you will the browser will automatically send a cookie to you. So I am going to check. For the first time, this whole thing will be null. So I am going to say, if this array is null, what does means? There is no cookie at all. When this can happen? When you are visiting it for the first time. So if CARR is null, that means no cookies are there. This is the first time you are visiting. So what you are going to say? Welcome, your first time you are coming. So for the first time if you come, they say welcome sir. So you are going to say welcome. How do you say welcome? In uh, Java you have a print line. You have used that. But a print line will print it on the monitor, your black and white screen. But I don't want to come that uh, it in the uh, screen. I want to come, uh, I want to get it on the browser. How can I? Uh, get it on the browser. I have to use the response object. Remember, directly I can't use the response object. I have to use the get writer object. I have to write it. Actually, it is going to create a buffer. So the, uh, if you write one one line, it will it can send one one line to this. Remember, this is a running. Even though you are running it on uh, the local machine, generally what happens is uh, the server is running on the internet. Just imagine the server is uh, giving you one one line at a time. Means it is going to be a terrible uh, resource. Okay, one line it is sending one line. It is not going to do it. What it is going to do is it is going to buffer all your output. All this output it is going to buffer, and together it is going to send. Okay, so I have to say that to get this out here. So that I can buffer all of them and in one shot I can send it. So in your C, uh, the in your, which one, uh, Java program you use the print line or printf. But I am not going to use the uh, direct print line. I am going to say out dot print. Okay. Out is a stream. Now I think you have used this uh, scanner class. In that scanner class you generally used out or scanner sc or something. sc dot print line. Here also same thing. Out dot print ln okay, you can do that but uh, i am a bit lazy you know that and because uh, i know how to copy paste i'm going to just to copy this thing from here to here control c and i'm going to just paste it here okay, h1 hope uh, you are familiar with the headers h1 h2 h3 h and so on so i am going to say h1 and i'm going to say this is the first time user is visiting i'm going to say welcome new user because he is a new user okay welcome new user this is the first time this person is coming so i'm saying welcome you are the newest person because why you are new person because you don't have the cookie first person who is coming if the person is coming for the first time he is not he or she is not going to get the cookie because i have not given the cookie so he is the new or he or she is the new user for new user remember so here you are you brought a new machine you are going to the facebook there is no cookie so facebook says oh hello you are the new person what the facebook will do cunning facebook will give you a cookie and it will say store this cookie and get me next time if you are coming i know that you are coming for the second time third time as well so i am i'm not going to stop here alone i am going to say you are the first user so take a cookie and keep it with you. How do you say take a cookie? Cookie is equal to CK and equal to new, create a new cookie. You are first time, you are visiting it for the first time. This is your first visit. Take it. Okay. So, user was here. This was the user. He came to Facebook. What the Facebook said, okay, you don't have any cookie. You are simply coming without the cookie. Take a cookie and keep it with you. 
So this is what I've done. Take a cookie. You are visiting it for the first time. Next time if you are coming, get this cookie and come back to me. So this cookie has to be brought because I gave you a cookie. Next time onwards, whenever you are coming back, get this one. So next time if you are coming, this is not going to be null because the cookie will be there. For the first time, this is null because the client is not sending any cookie. Second time, the client will send a cookie. So second time, this story is not going to be valid because second time, this is not going to be null. It is going to be something. Okay, so let's go to the else part. So if it is null, you are visiting it for the first time. Else if it is not null, you are not visiting it for the first time. You are coming it for the second time. However, there is a problem. What is the problem? Problem is when you are visiting it for, let's see, when you are visiting it, hey, what is this happening? Okay. When you are visiting it for the first time, you are not giving, taking any cookie, but the server, in, in my case, I am expecting the server is giving only one cookie. But you know, I have already told you, server can give you number of cookies. Okay. How many numbers in theory class, they will tell you, but I, 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 otherwise it, this is going to be a theory class altogether. So it, there can be many cookies. If, it, if the server has given five cookies, next time when you're visiting, all the five cookies will also go back along with it. So from the five cookies, you have to find out which is your cookie. Because other program or other part of the program may also send a cookie. So you must be careful about your cookie. So how can I know that which is this, uh, my cookie? So whatever cookies that the server has received, it is going to store it then in an array. And you know very well in an array, there will be cookies. Take one one cookie and find out whether it is your cookie. If it is not, go to the second one, find out whether this is your cookie. This is your cookie. That means go to all the elements inside this array to find out which one is your cookie. Okay. How do I do that? You have to iterate. So how do you iterate? You know very well. So you have this for loop. Okay. And I'm going to say for object um, in the collection. So when I select that for object in the collection, that means is in. Uh, so what did I do it? So if you didn't uh, really get it. So what I told the NetBeans is for and control space for the object in the collection for every cookie remember this is an array okay so this is an array of cookies okay so this is an array of cookies so what i am saying for every cookie every cookie see for every cookie in this array in this array first time you get the first cookie second time you get the second cookie third time you get the third cookie and so on until the size of the array whatever number of cookies are there every cookie you take it one one cookie at a time you take it and what you are going to do after taking one one cookie you find out whether it is your cookie remember somebody else might have also said you are writing a program you're uh, in your team somebody else might have also sent a cookie that is their cookie they are doing it for some uh, their work okay so you can't say that okay i'm only the person allowed to send the cookie they can also send the cookie so I am taking this cookie, remember this is the cookie, this is the variable, it could be x, it could be y or anything, so far, so I am going to take this cookie and I gave the name, what is the name I gave to this cookie, that is a key, what is the name, user, so I am going to say get the cookie, get the name, not get, get the name, okay, and check whether that name is equal to, what is it? If it is equal to user. So whether, see what is my cookie? My cookie has a name user. This is the name I gave, user. So check whether it is user. If it is a user, if the name of this cookie that it is sent, where is this? The name is user. Can you see that name is user? That is my cookie. So if this is it, then this is my cookie. If it is not, then somebody else might have sent the cookie. I don't know who else can send the cookie. Somebody else might have sent it. Okay. If it is there, I am going to get this value. Remember, this is a text. Can you see this one? 
this is a text the, whatever you write it in double quotes is a text i'm going to convert it into integer so i'll take integer variable int n how can i convert something into integer you know very well integer integer dot parse int okay what is that i'll go to this cookie again cookie say this is the cookie and i told you last time i i got the key so remember two things are there this is key or the name this is the value so this time i'm going to say hey cookie i don't want the name i know that it is my cookie get the value get the value for it. okay so whatever value i got it okay i'm going to get that so n in this case is one okay i'm going to increment this n so this is the remember this is string now i have converted it into integer and i can uh, increment it how can i increment it i can just say n plus plus you know in the c one of the best thing you learnt in c is this plus plus and minus minus so you know what is it okay and that is not the end of it now i am going to say i am going to cut this one from here you know control x to cut and i am going to paste it control v to paste always okay and i am going to say a different word over here i am going to say welcome back your come back remember if the cookie is there it is welcome back the cookie is not there it is okay welcome back and full stop so in english you know you studied english for 2 years that means you know english better than me this is your okay nth visit n could be anything n is for the first time n is 1 n is 2 and so on so far nth visit so this is your nth okay visit so so this is your first visit this is your second visit this is the third visit and so on so forth remember for the first visit you can't say welcome back only for the second visit you can say welcome back first visit if you say welcome back then uh, you don't know english so but uh, i know that you know english better than me because you studied english for 2 years okay. so language was there so you okay that is it now that is not enough remember you have incremented here on the server but uh, it has to be highlighted on the client so you have to recreate this cookie so what is the meaning of it you incremented it on the where is it going uh, you incremented it on the server okay now recreate this cookie again recreate that cookie again and again send it to the client okay if you incremented it on the server what will happen see i have lot of money in uh, my bank account if they do something on the bank account uh, how can i know that okay only if i get one sms or something i know that my money has been debited credited whatever it is okay. on their own if they are doing something can i know that thing so only when i receive the new updated version i know that something has changed so the cookie value has you have incremented it. the whatever value you got it you incremented it now this incremented value has to be sent back how do you send back you create one more cookie and send it back okay so i start a, a new cookie okay new cookie cookie c i i started ck so ck means old cookie so where is it ck means old cookie. now ck n means a new cookie n just okay equal to new okay cookie same story cookie what is uh, this one remember when you write it the spelling must be proper okay user what is the value value is n you can't just type n there because n is an integer how do you immediately convert it into string you know where if you take anything and concatenate it with the string whole thing becomes string this is the easiest way to convert anything into string just concatenate it with the a string it is string okay that's simple as that now that is not enough if you just create the cookie and keep it with you nothing is going to happen you have to respond it back 
to the client. How do you say? You say response. So remember, request and response. Two words are there. Response means what's come to, to, to the server. And I'm going to say add cookie. And uh, this time that means he is not able to detect that. Uh, this is not a cookie. It is a CKN. What is the CKN? My new cookie. Now the question, uh, if you are not uh, uh, studied the theory class, let's start with the story. So my neighbor's dog is uh, somehow not happy with uh, my video recording. Anyway, so for the first time, whenever you go to the uh, uh, this uh, site, or this uh, Facebook, Facebook does not give you any cookie. Uh, you don't have any cookie, and you go to the Facebook. So when you get the response from the facebook it will give you a cookie okay and what is the name of this uh, cookie name of this cookie is user second time when you visit it second time when you visit it you send this cookie back okay this user cookie was sent to you you sent back this user cookie what is the response response is it created one more cookie with the updated value this is a new cookie is it not so does that mean you have two cookies with you the answer is no what the browser knows is remember this is a piece of text it is not the object don't get confused or the browser does has not studied java or php or python Browser does not know anything about the programming language. For the browser, it is just a text. One part of the text is user. Second part of the text is the value. It is just a thing. So it is. Uh, look, if you look at this uh, uh, Firefox here, uh, this is text. That's all. It's just text information. Now, when you are going, when you visit the Facebook or uh, any place. For the first time when you visited here, no cookie was there, but you received a cookie with the name user. Again, you visited back okay, and you sent this user cookie. You sent it along with the request. But what was the response? Respond was according to you is a new cookie with the n plus plus new value of this. But what was the name of the cookie? Name of the cookie was the user itself. So what the browser will do is it will not keep two cookie. It will delete the original cookie with the name user and rewrite this new cookie that is a user with the new updated value. So when the browser receives a cookie with the same name old cookie is deleted new cookie is added so this is what the browser is going to do so uh, if you send the cookie with the same name to the client side client will delete the old cookie and put the new value it's, it's like updating the value so this is what it is going to do just give me a second. I'm going to just close this door so that you won't see you listen to the beautiful melody of that dog. Okay, so uh, so let's do that particular thing. So this is what um, we have done. Okay. Uh, again, one thing got closed and the second thing started. Okay, so this is what is happening. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it again. Run it again okay run this uh, thing okay so don't worry you notice uh, this thing is going to happen now very important thing and this is called as a session cookie so don't worry session cookie will last uh, as long as the browser is open if you close the browser it will just delete this text so that is they are that is why they are called as session so it will not permanently store it it will temporarily store it you close i'm going to close it browser will forget everything okay, everything is gone it's not going to store it in the hard disk okay if you want to store it in the hard disk then you have to give it uh, some life and other things now let me not bother about it i'm going to go to the firefox okay i'll visit this firefox not this is not the firefox firefox is, my machine is slow you know very well so this uh, Firefox is updating. Oh, this is strange. 
okay so what to do hopefully it's going to start up because i want to just show you only firefox is showing that uh, options here okay so yeah hopefully the firefox will start so i'm going just to show you uh, in the firefox i've just copied this one remember uh, this is uh, what i'm using is bing so this is not the same browser this is a different browser so i'm starting this uh, firefox okay and hopefully the firefox will start my machine is a bit slow i don't know what is wrong with that machine but it is terribly slow so it's going to take some time kindly bear the problem it's going to show up i think i can pause uh, the machine is completely dead now okay so let's see whether this uh, okay hopefully I'm, I'm getting it okay so now the firefox these are all not required for me okay so remember i'm going to just paste it here okay now remember this is the first time i am just started the browser this is the first time i'm visiting i'm not going to visit it because i want to show this thing in my web development in the network no request is being made now i'm going to just press enter here that means i'm doing the first request i send this first request okay request is sent let me go here request is sent so look at the cookie there no request has not sent any cookie response you got the cookie remember you visited for the first time you visited here you got a cookie in response remember you don't didn't had any cookie so what the browser said welcome new user because you didn't carry any cookie browser knew uh, the the server knew that you didn't have any cookie it created a cookie and it gave you the cookie and what was the value one okay now i'm going to refresh it what is the meaning of saying request uh, refresh requesting again i'm requesting this page again give me this thing again i'm making a request how do i do it i'm going to just refresh it look at here it's going to create a new request now i'm going to go and click here reload this page again you notice a new request this is a new request okay new request and look at what has happened you are welcome back this is your second visit how did that happen this happened because i'm just going to click here this happened because when i requested remember i got the cookie for the first time i didn't got the cookie but the browser gave me a cookie when the server gave me a cookie so for the second time when i'm visiting it for the second time i took this and i went to the server what the server did it took this number one okay incremented it and you said welcome back two things and it used that incremented cookie and sent it back and that is why you notice that what is the increment the original value was one you incremented it by one that is one plus one is two and what is the new value of this user cookie the new value of the user cookie is two can you see there now if i refresh it what's going to happen it is going to send this value remember this is gone it will you send it this request and the server will increment n plus plus you know very well this is the n plus plus it's going to increment it n plus plus and say you are visiting it for the third time and that incremented cookie will be sent as the response so let me do that thing i'm going to refresh it again this is the second visit refresh it this is your third visit why in the request second value was sent incremented and third value came again if i refresh this will be sent if this value will change n plus plus and it's going to give you the fourth value let me do it one more time and this is what you see okay and that is what is your story so for the first time you say welcome to the site 
second time you say welcome back this is your third visit fourth visit sixth visit sixth and so on so forth and that is what is the question okay find whether you are a new user your new user means you are not carrying the cookie if you are repeating it i am just showing you how many times you have visited okay that's what you are supposed to do it so the code is very very simple you just uh, check whether there is a cookie there is no cookie that means the first time you create a cookie second time onwards if the cookie is there increment it and then say some message to the user that's all thank you for your interest we will meet again in the next exercise thank you